Hey, what's going on guys? Root from NoShell.com here today, and we are looking at some more Python. Continuing off our Python tutorial video series that we've been doing, we are on lesson 19 at this point, and now we're going to start looking at loops. Now, loops are really special. What they do is they let you uh, repeat a sort of process or a code block as many times as you need to, and you can pass in different values and different, and different information, so you can manipulate things over and over and over again, and yet you can still test for different scenarios depending on the values. So there are usually different kinds of loops. In this case, uh, you, we're going to be looking at the for loops and the while loops, and maybe some more if some come to mind, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's really all we have to worry about for now. But we're going to check out while loops in this video. So I'm going to get started with idle. You can open it up too. And I'm going to drag it over here so it's visible. Create a new window with control N. I will save this as file.python. You can save it whatever you want. I kind of suggest you save things, like save each lesson individually so you'll have something to review if you want to. You can comment things that you've kept in mind or things that you've noticed and that sort of thing. So you can almost have like sort of notes while you're going through these video series. But hey, let's get started. Um, in my case, I'm going to get started with the syntax. So you can look over on the left-hand side there. The while loop has a sort of syntax where you just have the keyword while, you have your condition, then you have your colon, and then you have your new code block, which is just indented. Um, I'm going to throw in my com my, uh, my programming style here. I'm going to have my condition surrounded in parentheses, so I'm going to leave that blank for now. Finish up the skeleton, get my colon going, get my commented, uh, my commented code blocks here, and here we'll, we'll type in our code and the condition. Now, while loops, the condition will always evaluate to one or one or another Boolean value. It'll be either true or false. If it's false, it'll stop repeating this. It, won't, it just won't do it, kind of like an if statement. If it's true, it'll do it again and again and again and again. So we can potentially put ourselves in an infinite loop. If we just said while true, which is obviously already evaluated to true, it'll just repeat this same thing over and over and over again. I don't recommend doing this for too long. You might get a, like, a segmentation fault or something. <laughs> Probably not really good for your computer or anything, but you can just, you can do something. Let's print out, um, oh my god. And I'm going to put a comma here rather than a colon. A comma is actually going to prevent print from outputting a new line. So that's a little bit of an interesting technique and attack that you can keep in mind. And let's try this. Let's run this program. This is gonna this is gonna be a little crazy when you look at idle. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. See it's gonna keep doing it over and over and over again. We can hit control C here to stop the process, and I'll switch right back over here. But it's it's gonna keep doing this. There's nothing stopping it. But Let's say we tried something with a with a variable. Let's give a counter, let's say counter equals zero. Now we can have a different condition, say, uh, let's see, counter, if I can type things correctly, counter is less than, let's actually set a new, another variable here, limit can equal 10. So counter, while counter is less than limit, print we are counting. Now watch this very closely. Because if we if we try this, it's going to do it repeatedly. It's not going to stop. And the reason this is, is because we haven't incremented a counter. Now, counter is what we're going to keep adding values to, and incrementing is the terminology that we use here. We add one to, and that's what incrementing is really meaning. We're adding to the value just bit by bit. So if we do counter plus equals one. Now keep in mind that counter plus equals one is the same exact thing as counter equals counter plus one. We're taking the value, we're taking the current value of counter and then adding one to it and then resetting the, the counter variable to that. So when we have that assignment operator with the plus equals, all that's really doing is taking the current value and adding more to it. It's, it's taking the relative amount. So if we are counting, we can we can try this now, and now we get we are counting, we are counting, we are counting, we are counting, and it does this ten times. Because we have zero, and it's going to go, well, it's less than ten, so it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but it's not going to get to ten, because it, it doesn't want to equal ten, it wants to be less than ten. Now we can check this out in the program. We can just say we are counting, we are counting at, and then we can concatenate the string form of counter. Let's try it again. We are counting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
It doesn't get to 10. So once it gets there, it'll stop though. So if we give ourselves a little bit of a notification of what's going on, program starts, delete that here, get to the end of the line, program ends. Let's get a new line here so it's a little bit better looking. Program starts, we're counting all these things and program ends. Okay, so this makes sense because it's going to keep it's going to keep repeating this code until that condition is returned false. Because once counter gets to 10, it's it's not less than 10 anymore. It's it's greater than 10. It's equal to 10 even. So, if we get out of there and we print counter Um, let's do the string, the value of counter, we can concatenate on there, is not less than the string value of the limit. Now we can run this. 10 counter is not less than 10, and that makes sense. Counter has added once again, even though it's 9, because it's going to keep doing this, counter First, it's going to run through counter is equal to zero, and it's less than ten. So it does this; it adds to it again. It does it. It goes now that it's one. It does it again. One is less than ten. Keeps doing it. Two. Two is less than ten. Does it again. What well, eventually it's going to keep doing this until it gets to the point where nine. You have nine. Nine is less than ten. So it's going to add to it, and ten. Now we, now counter is at ten, but ten is not less than ten. So we have here. Counter has become 10, but it's not going to run this again because our expression has returned false. Does that make sense? Uh, I feel like that's all I want to try for now in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was able to understand. I feel like it's a little bit of an easy concept, and especially when you keep exploring it in this sort of way, you can see lots of things. It, all that matters really is whether the expression or the condition that you are testing for returns true or false. So, uh... There you go. See you guys in the next tutorial, and have a great day.